champion and great driver. I, I learned that well. Um, I learned that in Saturday night in, in victory lane as well and heard that Dave wasn't just a past pro stock champ, but he was pretty much what they call the man in that division. Um, I think he's got a bright future in late models. I really do. That he, He's been – he stays out of trouble. Doesn't. And here's the thing. A couple of times I saw him get in trouble this year on the racetrack was by no means anything he did. It was somebody else getting into him, and, and he's a racer, man. He's a racer, and I think he's going to – Well, he respects his and everybody else's equipment. He does. But he also has that drive to wheel a car. He does. And, well, he's on. He's one of those guys that doesn't put, you know, 80 grand into his car. Either. Right. And he, that's the respect factor is that's what you're – that's where it comes from. Uh, one more championship that has been locked up, Dylan Sauer. Dylan Sauer in the 7S and the Jolt Labs Hornets. He he locked it up with 283 points. Uh, Jenna Hedges finished second in points with 239. Tim Hedges, 231. Quentin Tritzler, 226. And fifth in points was Chris Boynton with 182. The Hornets were wild to watch this yes, year, man. Were. That, that was, was Jenna's <sighs> first year, and wasn't it? Anymore? I don't think it was her first year. No, I mean in uh, in what she was driving. In that car? I don't know if that was the first year in that particular car or not, but I'll tell you what, at the end of the season, she was in the hunt. I mean, she she was was right there in the front of the pack, top two, top three every week. I think that was a newer car for the season. I think she started in a different car, and in that car they completed and brought out to the track. Um, A couple other things. One other thing I wanted to to, um, talk about. Okay, and again, first year at Southern Oregon Speedway, learning how. And Mike McCann isn't afraid to step out of the box and do things different. We learned that quick. I think he does different things all the time. He does, but he's got a different format for his show, which works. It works. He does do some things different. Um, We've had a, I can't tell you how many messages. You guys know, you see all the messages that come into Moxie. Mm -hmm. All the messages that came in, about track records, how track records are set. And, you know, it's it's a qualifying deal with a two-lap qualifying uh, or three, depending on, you know, what format. If you're using group qualifying, typically you get three laps with four cars on the track or whatever the case may be. Normally it's a single car, two-car lap, or two laps per car qualifying session, and that's how you determine a track record, okay? Traditionally, that's true. I can't argue with that. And that's what I've known. So when I heard the track record got broke and it was during a heat race, I looked at Don and he says, that's how it's done here. If that's how it's done here, that's how it's done here. You're not going to change it. It's Mike McCann's wage. You don't have qualifying. If you turn the fastest lap in the feature, that, that's faster than any other lap in the history of that division. They call that the track record. That's a track record. You can send us all the messages you want. We have nothing to do with that. Okay, we don't have any 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 say whatsoever that happens at Southern Oregon Speedway as far as format, rules, regulations, policies, and procedures. We're there as a promotions team to handle media and promotions. Okay, Mike. I think it's a lot harder to set a record in with traffic around you <laughs> than when you're just out there by yourself. Just well, here's the thing, and and, and there that's been, and that was a good point. There's some other people that have brought that up, and I'm glad you did because I'm going to say this right now. When Charlie Thompson broke that track record during the feature, it might as well have been a qualifying lap with a single car because there was nobody around him. He was so far gone. I mean, there, there was no chance, barring a caution or a red flag, anybody was going to get close to that 101. That's how fast that car was. Ten. It's the first sub-11 second lap for a sprint car that isn't a 410. And remind everybody, how big is that track? One-third. One third. Next door is what? Quarter mile. Quarter mile. Drag strip. What were some of the times you were hearing over there? My God. Um, over the PA. Yeah. I didn't hear a lot of times, but I did hear some speeds. Sure. I heard two speeds. They had the. I guess funny cars were in town. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard speeds of two hundred four and two thirty four. Wow. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> It might have been. They might have. Been, they should have been talking about Charlie Thompson. That's how fast he was going. Right. I mean, he wasn't. But I, I, I'm just making a point. He was in a league of his own Saturday night. 
Well, they made some changes on that car. Whatever changes they made, they nailed perfect for those track conditions because hands down, that was the fastest I've seen a sprint car go at any track in a long, long time. I'm telling you right now, with that motor, with that setup on that track, he would have ran with the World of Outlaws. That's how fast he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wasn't just staying ahead of everybody. He's trying to catch the end he of the He caught field. him. He wanted he, to catch the people in front of him. He caught him. Yeah, and he's a racer. That's he what caught he him. Now, now, okay, and that's something else. Let's, let's talk about this. Since we're talking about, you know, recapping last Saturday night in the season. Um, <clears throat> some other messages that we have received was about the incident with the 101 and the 4M. I'm not afraid to talk about it. So we're not talking bad about anybody, but we'll talk about the situation. And I'll, and I'll express my thoughts on it. Okay? Everybody saw it. Late in the race, well, I was at lap 19, 20, five, six laps ago. He catches the back of the pack, and he's getting he, he's under Dave Marvel. Getting going to put a lap on the forearm of Dave Marvel. Marvel's running, I'd say, the middle groove. Thompson dives to the bottom, slides out, makes a little bit of contact with him. Marvel hit the wall. I didn't see the flip because I was trying to watch what happened to the 101 if there was any damage to the leader. Typically, that's what I'm looking at in a situation like that. He goes flying by. Car looks all right. I turn back to turn four. I see Dave Marvel's car sitting there, and the wing is hanging off, and it's bent. And I thought, did he just get into the wall and catch the fence, or did he go over? From what I understand, he went over. I didn't see it. You guys saw it. Dave, you saw it. We saw yeah, the replay. I replays. think I actually recorded you it. Kept, you captured I that. I think I captured okay. it. I haven't got to that far yet. So, there were some comments made, okay? And I want to talk about this situation because of some of those, con those, those comments that were made. Okay, you've got the leader coming through lap traffic, okay? But let's talk about why. We've all, been, we've all been around the racetrack a long time. We understand racing. We understand, for the most part, we can look at a situation and understand what a racer does and why. Okay? If you really want to talk about what happened in that situation, I'm not making excuses for anybody here. I'm talking about the situation. I'm talking about in the cockpit what's going on. Okay? At the time that deal happened, what was going on? Anybody remember what was happening behind the leader? Remember that number one car we talked about, Bailey Hibbard, was all over the backside of the leader at that point. They were both flying. He was all over the backside. He had gotten underneath the 101, showed him some color a couple times. The 101 knew he was there, and he wasn't willing to give up that gutter. He wasn't going to do it. He dives to the bottom, slides up, trying to hold position. He felt the pressure from the number one car, Bailey Hibbard. I will guarantee you he felt that pressure. That's why he made the aggressive move that he made to get by trying to put a lap car between himself and the car behind him racing for the lead. <clears throat> was it a bold move? Was it aggressive? It absolutely was. It absolutely was. But now let me ask you a question. <clears throat> and I like Dave Marvel. I do. He's a good driver. He stayed clean all year, did a good job. But let me ask you a question. If those tables were turned, and it was Dave Marble in the position that Charlie Thompson was in, would he have done the same thing? Would any racer in the cockpit of that car done the same thing that Charlie Thompson did? I'm going to say out of 100 drivers, 90 of them would have. <clears throat> Maybe more. It's just the racer instinct. You're battling for position. You're battling for a win. You don't have a win yet this season. You're battling for the track championship. There's a lot of stuff going on in that little bit of time that created that wreck. Just so people know, when I'm recording them, when something like <clears> that happens, I try to immediately send a, a little clip of what just happened down to uh, Corey so he can kind of see what happened. Because when you just see it for a split second, you get 10 people, they're going to get 10 different versions. Absolutely. That, that's, that's if perspective. If you get to see what happened, then you can kind of give a truthful scenario. Right. Right. So, and that, that's, you know, again. One. That is my opinion. That is my perspective of what happened. And I may be completely wrong, but being around racing as long as I have and watching that situation for what it was, I'm going to bet I'm not too far off the truth. You guys saw it go down. What, what do you think? Nina, you didn't. You weren't nope. there. You were. 
And I was busy doing whatever I was doing. I didn't actually see it happen either. I just saw it afterwards. Gary, were you watching the situation? Although I think, did, did you send me a clip of that, Dave? Yeah, I believe because, I did. Yeah, I, to me, I'm I looking for it right clip. now. They just, they just got hooked up. I mean, well, you no, know, here, here's racing. the thing. Here's, it, it, and Somebody that's what that's slid. that's my point that I I'm making. Know who slid. That's my but point that I'm making. It was strictly a racing it deal. It was racing. Given the circumstances, given the circumstances that were that were under, uh, that were presented. Okay, you're talking about two drivers racing for a title. One driver that hasn't got a win yet, but well, neither one of those guys have got a win yet, racing for their first win of the year, trying to put a lap car between himself and the second place car. Was it a bold, aggressive move? It absolutely was. Yep. Sure was, was it a risky move? Turned probably the riskiest was. move. Yeah. I've, it's time. probably the riskiest move I've seen a, a sprint car driver make all season long. But when you get ready, you go on that fast, you get ready to go past somebody, you don't know what the guy in front of you is going to do. You don't even know if he knows you're there. I mean, he might decide to come There's down and you're right there. There's a lot of things going on. And that's it, what I saw. Most most of the wrecks were from, I don't think somebody knowing somebody was coming around them. Mm-hmm. They just slide up into them, down into them. Because I'll tell you right now, it certainly wasn't done. Um certainly wasn't done with intent. I'll promise. And there were some people that were mad, and I get it. The people that were mad are associated with the 4M car, fans of the 4M. If I was a fan of the 4M car, and I'm not saying I'm not, I'm just saying if I was a fan of the stands, let me rephrase that. If I was a fan of the 4M car sitting in the stands, or I'm a crew member on that car, and I watch that wreck, I'll tell you right now, I'm hot. I am yeah. absolutely hot. Was the move high, high, high risk move? Absolutely was. Did it need to be made when he made it? That's a 50-50 deal. Do, do you, do, here's the thing. If he doesn't make that move, okay, and you watch what's going on behind him, if he doesn't make that move, the one car's going to drive right by him on the high side. You know, I don't know if he could intentionally do something right there where they were and well, get away with it's it. It's sprint cars. If you intentionally right. you, go to you wreck do somebody. anything to a sprint car. You're, you're wrecking two it's cars. It's a bad thing. You're both going to wreck. Absolutely. You get those tires yep. hooked up. Absolutely. So that's why anybody that's. Number one, number two, or whatever that, you're not going to do something intentionally. I mean, they're not the California Highway Patrol doing a pit stop on them, you know? Right, right, right. And and I think that, you know, like you said, it's, it's sprint cars. You're not going to intentionally pull a move like that because the risk of you getting caught up and getting upside down is just as great as the guy that you're trying to take out. We've seen it happen. I, 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 I'm not defending Charlie Thompson's decision on the move that he made. Because there's going to be people, people that disagree with it. I'm simply saying, in my perspective, what I saw, given the situation, it, it, that that's what it is. That's what it is. Um, he was very fortunate. He was very fortunate that that car didn't, you know, yeah. break something on the front end, get wrapped up in the car, and, and launch and go upside down. I mean, there there uh, there was so many things that could have happened bad in that situation. He was lucky to come out of it the way he did and get the win. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. I will say that um, <clears throat> it was a crazy situation. You know what it reminds me of? Um, and I, like I said, I didn't actually see it, but just having you explain it that way, it reminds me of the Joey Tanner, Clay Daly deal at the Bud Nationals. You Absolutely. Know, where somebody had to make a move. And he made a move, and it didn't turn out well for either one of them. Well, it didn't. It absolutely didn't. And then you had two wrecked race cars, and the guy sitting in third drove to victory. Yes. Uh, and that's something yep. else that could have happened. Um <clears throat> You know, we've had that discussion on this show before. Uh, but, you know, the people saying that he did it on purpose, uh, I'll guarantee he didn't do that on purpose. The people saying, you know, the, the negative comments, I get it. I, I, I get where they're coming from. Um, like I said, if I'm a crew member on that car or I'm, I'm a fan that comes to the track to watch the 4M yeah, car. Yeah, you wouldn't be happy. I'm hotter than Mad B, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I understand where they're coming from. Uh, I thought, I personally thought it was a bold, risky move that was, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I would have done it. I mean, there I just said 90, 90, 90 drivers out of 10 my, or out of 100 probably would have. I don't know if I'm in that 90, given the, the fact that, you know, you're looking for your first win in the championship. Um, he pulled it off. I mean, he got the win, and, and that kind of speaks for itself. You, yeah. you can't change that, but. I understand at the same time those folks that are upset with it. Totally understand that. 
it's a matter of perspective, right? Um, 